The China Brain Thought Experiment, conceived by philosopher Ned Bloch in 1978, is a powerful tool in the philosophy of mind used to critique functionalism. Functionalism is the theory that mental states are defined purely by their causal relations, their inputs, outputs, and relations to other mental states, rather than by the physical stuff, neurons or silicon, that realizes them. Bloch's scenario forces us to confront the possibility of a system that is functionally identical to a conscious mind, yet arguably lacks genuine subjective experience. The hypothetical and the hypothesis. The scenario asks us to imagine that the entire population of China, with its billion-plus inhabitants, is organized to precisely simulate the functional structure of a single human brain. Each person acts as an individual neuron, communicating with others via two-way radio or telephone to simulate the synaptic firing and signal transmission. The system, in its totality, receives sensory inputs, simulated by signals to the input neurons, processes information according to the rules of the neural network, and generates motor outputs, simulated by signals from the output neurons. Crucially, this system is a perfect functional duplicate of a conscious human brain. According to strict functionalism, if the China brain performs the exact same functional role as a human brain, if the causal flowchart is identical, then it must possess the same mental states, including consciousness and qualia, the subjective, qualitative feel of experiences, like the redness of red or the ache of pain. Functionalists adhere to the principle of multiple realizability, suggesting that the substrate doesn't matter, only the function does. Eh. Block's intuition and the absence of subjectivity. Block, however, appeals to our intuition that this vast, distributed system of individual people, each merely following simple instructions and communicating via radio, would not suddenly give rise to a single, unified, subjective consciousness. Where would this phenomenal experience reside? No single person in the system is conscious of the brain's overall thoughts. They are only conscious of following their specific, isolated instructions. The system itself seems too vast, mechanical, and decentralized to produce the unity and intimacy of a single mind. Bloch argues that the China brain is a clear counterexample to functionalism. He contends that while the system achieves functional equivalence, it acts like a brain, it suffers from a lack of phenomenal equivalence. It doesn't feel like a mind. This distinction between mere function and actual experience highlights what Bloch calls the absent qualia objection. If a functional duplicate can exist without consciousness, then functionalism fails to capture the full nature of the mind, specifically the crucial element of phenomenal consciousness. Okay. Broader implications. The China Brain Thought Experiment successfully shifts the burden of proof onto the functionalist. It forces them to either accept the counterintuitive conclusion that a billion-person network is having a subjective experience of tasting coffee or solving a physics problem, or to concede that there is more to the mind than its functional organization. The experiment suggests that the physical substrate and its organization, specifically 